And then during this time, they'll be doing a lot of um, homework help, tutoring, health and wellness education, um, proactive, hands-on learning throughout these sessions. All right. Any comments or questions related to this? Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, thank you. Um, wondering about uh, the increase, the $150 increase for the weekly programming and the $300 increase in the full day programming, uh, what the increase um, are due to. And also just a comment that I appreciate here and in the other um, uh, items, uh, the data in terms of the evaluation and uh, what the programs are, are doing well and how the site visits have gone. Um, and when there's one for the after school program, I think the data here were for, uh, was for the summertime. Um, also curious to see how the after school is going when you do that. So thank you. Of course. So we're definitely going to take the initiative to evaluate all of our programs summer after school. So we're definitely on board with that. And in regards to the pay increase, uh, the the server or the provider actually um, buys a lot of the materials um, ranging from snacks, all the art supplies, and also they have a they incorporate a new mentoring component during these um, sessions. So that's also to support all the items and supplies needed to actually engage the young students who are going to be participating in the mentoring group. Okay, thank you. And mm -hmm. is this is this on site uh, in the New Haven schools, or is this at their location? This is at their location. Okay, thank you. No worries. Um, the only thing I have to add is I appreciate having the, you know, the information that's in here, the, um, uh, I don't know, the, the ratings, you know, the observation data about how the program's going, and then also the statement that clarifies that this is, um, you know, the, the, the statement you all have started to use with faith-based uh, organizations about the secular nature of the services. And so I think that's great. And um, thank you for having that in place. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. All right, Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, I just had one other question, which I think you've probably answered before. Um, we Do we pay one per student? So do we look at the attendance per the session and then reimburse for that session? Or do we um, pay by the session? Uh, what we usually do is um, <clears throat> we say it's up to X amount of students because attendance could vary. So if we if they say they're able to take on 35 kids, but only 34 come, we're not going to penalize them for one student not showing up because we know things happen. Families have um, situations that occur or the student might just be absent on that uh, on that specific day. So we don't want to hold the contractor liable for that. And we know that um, things happen and attendance will fluctuate. OK, and if they. Uh... What is our what is our knowledge of, you know, let's say it's up to 35 students. Are they consistently in the 30s or would they be consistently in the 20s? Like, how do we are we keeping track of that piece? Of course. So yes. um, every month I actually review um, part of their invoicing. They have to attach their attendance and I actually um, look through all that. And that's where I have conversations and say, oh, this contractor isn't meeting their requirement. What can we do to actually increase these numbers? Should we send out a parent link to actually uh, reach out to the more families and say, we have this program and available? So um, we always evaluate everything before uh, we actually submit payment. And then we have conversations with the contractor to assure that we're meeting the requirements of the contract. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I guess as an extension to that, if it was that the, you know, if it was just going to be a consistent, there was just going to be a smaller number of students, would you all pursue an adjustment so that it would be a program of up to, instead of up to 35 students, up to 20 students and adjust the pricing? Like, like if, if it was, if the numbers were consistently low, would you consider either changing the agreement, canceling it, or reducing the number of students? Yes. The, yes, we will have that conversation with the um, with the provider to work on mitigating first increasing because we want to service the students first and foremost, and then we will also or and or we'll work with the provider on revising revisiting the contract. So if we agreed on thirty and it turns out that the provider is servicing less than that number on a consistent basis, we will certainly. Um, come back and we have come back to you and say we are revising down because the contractor was not able to 
meet the initial the the initial agreement. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right, then we'll go on to number 10, which is an amendment with the agreement with Gateway. Um, Ms. Diaz Valencia. Hello, good evening, everyone. So this is additional um, enrollment funds that were added by the OEC to the school readiness um, sub grantees and the overall grant in general. So this is for 28,000 additional funds based on the enrollment numbers for school readiness at the Gateway Community College site. All right, thank you. Comments or questions? I had none on this one either. So we'll move on into the contracts. The first one is a word of a contract with utility communications. And we had an email from Mr. Lamb that he was not gonna be available. Is somebody else available to speak on this? Yeah, I'll take it for him. Thank um, you. This is like our on-call repair and maintenance services for our, um, security systems. Um, this uh, program allows us access control, and it's just in uh, here um, as a priority for um, repetitive features. All right, thank you. Comments or questions? All right, let's talk about then uh, the second one, which is Retech LLC water contract. So this is for the replacement of the ADA front decks at Sound School. Um, the decks at Anderson, Thompson, and McNeil are in immediate need of replacement. Um, the boards are appealing. Um, the decks are actually separating from the schools. Um, so we are working with the architect. We actually designed um, new decking material. Um, we're gonna be using bamboo materials and um, steel material, which is more um, marine life, or I'm sorry, marine grade uh, materials for um, the surroundings. All right, thank you. Comments or questions? I had none on this one either. So we'll move into purchase orders. The first one is sports construction for bleachers at Fairhaven, Mr. Finale. So um, the bleachers at Fairhaven, again, they're you know in disrepair. Um, this is a major safety issue. The veneer on the main decking, as you will, um, is peeling, causing trippy hazards. Um, the, some of the rails are missing and other rails are um, damaged. Uh, we were able to work with a vendor to um, acquire um, bleachers rather quickly. Uh, normally it would take about 24 weeks for these to be made to come in. Um, they did have a set of bleachers for us that are available in six weeks. So we were able to go with that design, which fits perfectly in the school. Um, the seats and side curtains are going to be uh, mocked up to fit the school colors and the school logo. Um, that's it. Thank you. Comments or questions? I had none either. So let's um, see, that was the bleachers. Next is uh, Red Thread Spaces. Uh, Mr. Camarco. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this is a dance flooring. It's actually a mat that's roll ability to roll it up and put it back down. It's used in our dance studios, uh, the two at co-op. And the lifespan is six to 10 years, depending on usage. Ours is about 16 years old and we use it nonstop. So it needs desperately to be replaced. So, so you're saying for the record that the dance party at co-op just doesn't stop? Listen, we have a uh, our dance show. Our winter dance show is tomorrow night. So get your tickets now, 630 in our main stage. Come out and see it. But yes, the dance party never stops at co-op, Mr. Wilcox. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, any comments or questions related to this? Somebody will have to uh, take a 60 second and make a reel of this and uh, share it on social media to boost up those ticket prices. Yeah. <laughs> ticket sales, rather. We fit 350 people in the theater. We'd like to see it packed. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so if, if, uh, if you could send me an email with that information, <laughs> I'll see what I can do in terms of being there. Sounds great. Uh, thank you, sir. I had no questions related to this. Were there? Did you, Dr. Yarbrough? Okay. No, so, not for me. Thank you. Seems like we got good use out of the last one. So, okay. Uh, last uh, purchase order is with Tucker Mechanical. Mr. Ayane. Ayane. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Um, this is going to be for an emergency procurement. 
uh, of a heat exchanger uh, for Fame School. Um, inside the documents, I attached a memo that explained that we used a non-competitive negotiation procurement process and making sure that we got approval from the appropriate parties to do so. Um, this is for $33,775 uh, for a heat, heat exchanger that is needed for Fame School. Tucker Mechanical, who is our main HVAC vendor that does our repairs, will be doing this repair and exchanging that heat exchanger. Okay. And so to, to clarify, this is a group that we use for other services. This is an emergency replacement. And we do indeed have in place part of our policy is that this can happen <clears throat> for non-competitive negotiations. So, yes, sir. okay. Comments or questions related to this? All right. I think you've covered it and I do have one. At it, you have a cover memo that explains it. You're citing the policy, and you, and you're also pointing out that this is a group that has a state contract, and it's a group we've used before. So this is our current vendor for these things. So, yes, sir. Um, we'll call Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, just appreciation for working and getting this repaired before the winter comes, and you know, taking uh, avenues available to us to execute it. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Albert. All right. Thank you. I guess we've been blessed with some slightly warmer temperatures too. So hopefully we can get this done quickly. Um, and we'll just move right into the change order, which is also with you with the uh, change order for Connecticut controls. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Uh, this is going to be a change order request for 20% of the on-call contract value for Connecticut Controls, who handles all the controls, uh, repairs, and adjustments for our HVAC systems throughout the district. The contract value initially is $200,000, so we're asking for a 20% change order of $40,000, making the total amount now for $240,000, reason being that we have reached the 50% spending mark uh, for this particular contract due to all of the uh, HVAC uh, services that were needed at the end of the summer and the beginning of now the heating season. Uh, so with that increase, with spending has gone beyond or about 50% before we got halfway through the year and requesting the 20% increase for our change order in order to take us through the rest of the fiscal year for this school year. All right. Thank you. Comments or questions? Uh, I have none either. I just appreciate you guys planning ahead and and um, having that rule in place. And when you hit a threshold, you take the action to um, make the adjustments with the change order process. So I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. That looks like it is all of the action items listed. So I'm going to go ahead and make the motion. And that is I move that we send to the full board with a recommendation to approve these three abstracts, these 10 agreements, these two contracts, these three purchase orders and one change order. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and vote. Dr. Yarbrough? Yes. And I'm a yes, and I don't see that President Rivera is on the call, so the motion passes. And that moves on. So then we'll move on ourselves in our discussion items. The first one is kind of information only, which is uh, we've been supplied the FNO 2024 meeting dates. And uh, so just note those for the record. My understanding is the full board will be getting the meeting dates for all the committees and everything uh, maybe next week in our full board, but this doesn't require any action on our part, but it is for notification. Just please note that, of course, especially at the beginning of the year, we have some meetings move from Mondays to Tuesdays due to the uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday or uh, day um, holiday and uh, I think President's Day. So Got a couple in the first two months. Any other comments or anything on those? Did I forget anything, Ms. Mayo? 
You got it all. Okay. Also, uh, the next item on the agenda is an FNO discussion calendar, which is our process we've been doing over the last few months is having some things in place to plan ahead. I did send a draft of my thoughts to um, several of the regular attendees, and, you know, Dr. Negron, the committee members, Ms. DeMeo, Mr. Lamb, I think, Dr. Finley. Uh, so those are... Uh, just to clarify, that's my opinion on these things. Some of those things are things that we typically do, such as the second meeting of the month, we'll have the um, um, financial reports on the previous month. Uh, so some of those things are on there. There's also a few policy things, and there's also two things I wanted to highlight. Um, three things I wanted to highlight. One was like we did at the first January meeting, I think last year we had information presented about um, our after school programs and the RFQ process. So it'd be good to have a repeat of that with the new information about what, how things are going this year. Uh, we see these every meeting, so it's good to see them kind of like at one time, like here's all the things that are going on. So, but because that's right after the beginning of the year, wanted to make sure people knew that. A second thing is, I do think we need to have early in our budget process, a updating the information on our staffing guidelines report about where things are in terms of the gap so that we, as we are all out there working towards um, working with people on the budget, requests that we have fresh numbers about the the deficit and the gaps so for instance i was just at an alders education committee meeting last week and referenced that report about the number of positions we need for counselors um restorative folks uh psychologists social workers etc so it is information that gets used and so that is one of those things and then finally I'm requesting, because it's also something that comes up, it's a request of the student board members that we focus on restroom facilities in the school district. So my thought was maybe we could have a report about restrooms, some of the problems or issues, future plans, how this relates to the transgender student policy, to, uh, which uh, requires uh, restroom access, uh, not based on gender, et cetera. So those are three things I wanted to highlight. Um, if anybody has any comments or questions on that, please send it to the committee uh, as well as Dr. Negron and so that we can fit that in there. I'm. Th it's currently just my opinion. So I am looking for feedback uh, as well as stuff that if it's not reasonable uh, if we need more time, less time, if you have things that are ready to go, then we can do it earlier. But that's some of my thoughts. Any comments or questions related to this? All right, Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, thank you. Um, I was wondering if there's space or how we would might have a strategy conversation. I think there was a conversation on or a presentation on the facility side. And I think it was specifically around uh, the space we rent and how much it costs and what we should charge. And my question was just about how we capture what those costs actually are and where they can be re reported. Uh, so part of me was thinking that we have a number of after school programs, summer programs that are using the buildings. Should we factor that into um, the awards that we provide or some kind of way just track uh, what additional expenses that we may be incurring that we're not tracking officially. Um, okay, so that so might we, be an offline conversation. I don't know where it would show up. Okay, so we had, uh, when we looked at the facilities use policy, we did look at some data, if I remember correctly. I'll have to look at meeting materials. I believe we looked at data that actually for the first time was breaking that down in terms of what things were actually costing us. Um, so are you suggesting an update to that, Dr. Yarbrough? 
Yes. And if, um, and if we're not an update to that, and I think, I think what we said is that, uh, we're not tracking all the costs or some kind of way we're not, um, something's not happening when we started to look at that data. Um, and yeah, my thought was just maybe we can follow up on it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's think about that and, and think about when would be good. I also, it's reminding me I need to double check with governance committee because we did have some updates to the facilities use policy. I have to see where things are connected to that. And Dr. Negron had a hand raised. Yeah, Any, anybody else, Dr. Negron or? No, I just wanted to reiterate that yes, we have had had that conversation early on. And uh, I agree there could be additional thinking on what else could be um, added to what we collect now that we could capture, right? When we are having these programmings, almost like what is the in-kind, right? Uh, expense of the resources that we're providing in the event of some of the uh, facility use that is going out there where no money is coming in, right? To support either who's opening the building, who's staying in the building in terms of security, custodian. So all of that could be quantified. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and I think part of that is is uh, was information that was presented to also talk about because I think that there probably needs to be, especially because there's going to be you know some changes in the policy, but also that there were some recommendations, as I recall, on the um, um, price structure or who counts in one category versus another. So yes, okay. So I agree. This all sounds good. So we'll find a time. Uh, so please, as people are thinking about the discussion calendar, when's an appropriate time to have that? You know, we have two meetings a month. We're also moving into the budget season. So, um, but there also are some meetings that I don't have anything attached to in terms of things. So, um, if it if it's something that can wait until maybe March, then. I think we have some empty meetings already in terms of a discussion calendar. If it's something more pressing, then we should move it up. Um, so yes, this is great. Please think about this. And if you have other things, and anybody else that's on the call, if there's other things you think this committee should be looking at um, or reports that should be heard, or please, please let us know. Okay. Looking at the, if there's nothing else on this item, hearing and seeing nothing. Um, the next one was uh, the FY24 budget deficit mitigation process. Um, trying to remember, Ms. DeMeo, what we talked about related to this. I think it was just uh, getting an overview or an update as to where we are in terms of either if we could have the the reason for this was the current budget deficit number that's listed in our monthly financial reports has been similar and i guess it's just a question of when we'll be able to have a sense of where that number is now that we're moving into a mid-year point this is when it starts to change in the past so i guess i was just looking for clarification on that Okay, I can I can speak to that. Um, the numbers are going the wrong way. Um, <laughs> um, um, I met with the team today, and we're having some other issues with our interdistrict um, funding now uh, versus the the uh, um, raises that have gone into you know with the teachers. Um, so we're working on that now. We are um, ready to make some recommendations. Um, to the superintendent. As I said, we just met this afternoon, so I'm, we're I'm gonna work with the superintendent to make some recommendations on that. Um, we're also going to start looking at, um, we had uh, instituted a process last year with the hiring, and we know that, you know, if you see a teacher, you wanna grab a teacher, but 
what's happening is that some of the teachers are just coming in at salaries that we just can't we can't support. So we will be working with HR again to make sure that all the new hires, like if there's five candidates, we want to look at, you know, these the offer that they're making to the candidate. So that that was um, what we worked on this afternoon on um, the budget mitigation deficit. I did report at the last um, FNO meeting, some of the things, I think it was in the slide, some of the things that we're working on, we're still working on um, those, those items to see where we can reduce the budget wherever we can. Um, but um, fr uh, Friday's news was not a good picture for me. So it's like, we have, we're working on two folds now. Um, and um, so I did put a plan together to talk with the, um, with the superintendent and cabinet. So I don't wanna um, say any more about that until I, I've actually had a chance to share that um, with the superintendent. Okay, thank you. So it sounds like uh, in January, we'll be having more yes. information. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, is this, do you anticipate or do you want, do you want to have that information as part of our second January meeting where you talk about the financial report for, or do I you can want do, to? I can do it all. I would like to, some of my recommendations I would like to put in place um, early part of January, right after the holidays. So there are some things that I think we could do, you know, in-house. Um, but then there are some other larger issues which would take, take discussion. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it, it sounds like uh, that would be the second January meeting. Yes, I can do it all at and, one time. And, um, uh, and of course, you all already have outlined some of the things you're going to be doing. And yes. And um, okay. Well, comments or questions related to this? Okay. Uh, Dr. Yarbrough. Yeah, just that I appreciate uh, you and the team working on this, because uh, I know it's, uh, my understanding is that it's going to be uh, a lot to work through. So just thank you for yeah. being proactive uh, and whatever opportunities we might have uh, as a as a larger team to strategize and see what we can do, you know, I'm interested. Thank you. All right, so we'll have a good discussion then, and it, uh, this discussion would be, I'm sure, easier if um, one of the richest states in the country uh, would better equitably fund their schools. They do a great job. They're getting better. We just need them to keep keep moving forward and uh, uh, being able to spend the money in the categories where it needs to be spent. I think your, your comments about bringing in teachers at higher salaries, as Everyone can recall, I'm sure, that one of the mitigation strategies was try to bring in people at lower salaries. Uh, when you have teacher nationwide and statewide teacher shortages, people have options, and so mm -hmm. you need teachers. And so that that's just the nature of it, that that, that mitigation strategy is going to not continue to work. And um, so uh, I'll be also asking if we need to in that discussion about any hard questions or hard decisions, I mean, so for instance, should we, you know, should we have a general funds, like, like, like any of the funding items in January, should we be approving them if that's, if it's tied to the funds where we have a deficit, those are going to be some of those hard questions that. Yes, those are some of the um, issues that we discussed. Um, okay you know, looking at what's going through and see what we can, you know, defer if we have to, or to think about most likely not opening up new programs if we know that we can't sustain them. Because there's only, I mean, we're in December now, so it's really January. So it, you know, that's something to look at too, um, looking at the programs to see whether they, you know, open them or whether we should just look at not funding the um, well we don't have the funds to fund some of the programs so yeah. okay uh dr negron i'm looking forward to getting the recommendations that the team worked on so that then we can uh, come back on january 16th and give you a clear sense of what are going to be those mitigation strategies based on the recommendations that are coming from the team that huddled today all right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
And that's for this year's budget. And the next item on the agenda is the overview of the FY25 budget process posted on the website was uh, the budget timeline for developing the budget. Yes. Um, so would you like to talk about anything? Yes. Related to that? Okay. So what we did, we're actually a, a little bit ahead of the game. So it gives us more time to do the work. Um, we had, uh, we moved the due date up for the 20, November 24th for the reviewing the, um, the staffing rosters. Thank Thanks to the assistant supers who dedicated their time to sit with us and work with each of the schools. We are now at a, a, a place where we can um, get the rosters up to date. Now we've been working with HR as well. We um, And I wanna give a special thanks to Christine because they got it all done today. And so, um, and she's met with HR. So now there are a few outstanding issues, but we will have a clean roster now. So now we can begin the real work of looking at um, what's in each school and um, just comparing it with the principal. So we, we do have training this week um, on the budget process with the principals and the administrators um, where we will be um, giving them the worksheets and, and explaining to each of them what they should be doing as far as um, their non-personnel costs to make sure they review what the clean roster now to make sure we didn't miss anybody or somebody came in because what we did was we shut the roster down as of November the 13th because we had to pick a date to close in order to get the work done. So if there's anybody that maybe came in afterwards that we didn't that we weren't able to capture, um, then we, we give them a chance to make sure that they outline that person. Um, so this week, again, we will be doing the training um, on the, the forms themselves. We also have a form by which they can start preparing what are their needs, what are their concerns for next year. So we will give th them that form as well on the um, on Wednesday's training. Um, and then um, so they will have time. We will have individual budget sessions with the principals and the executive team and the superintendent that will be on December 18th, 19th and 20th. So we're setting up a, a Google calendar now. And so based on the um, assistant super that's in charge for that school, we'll have a list. And then the principals would just have to sign in as to what, what time on that particular day um, they would like, you know, that they would like to meet with us. And then we're going to set up the department head meetings, but we're going to do that after the holiday because we don't want to, you know, jam ourselves up. So we'll be meeting with the non-school department heads after the holiday. They they don't, ha you know, have large budgets because most of the budgets are site-based, based, you know, with the schools. And then we'll have everything coming back on January 16th. And then we'll do internal budget revisions just on things that we still need more clarity on. And that date will be determined. So we're looking at putting a first draft together in um, January, January, if everything goes well, at the end of January. And our first presentation will be the uh, finance and operations meeting in February. All right. Thank you. Are any comments or questions related to this? All right. Uh, the only thing that I'll say is I thank you for uh, putting the calendar together. I do think uh, that more than one budget presentation to the public or community forums, I think, will be important this year. Mm -hmm. You have it listed as that it could be one or more. So I do I do think that um, those would be useful. Um, and uh, also with new administration, it's also it's a great time to you know think about the budget presentations and uh, those materials that are put together to uh, support the numbers, explain the numbers, and uh, which is also why I also am requesting that we update the staffing guidelines deficit, which the, that project started from um, board member comments related to the budget. Uh, I think it was Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yarbrough that, uh, you know, it's an inspirational budget as well, not just a, uh, some that's talking about what good we could do if there was uh, adequate funding as opposed to the, the um, keeping the lights on type budget. Um, 
presentations that we've also had before. So I think mm -hmm. telling the story is is always key. Uh, anything else related to this? Um, no, I think that's it. And, and the rest of them, of course, are to be determined. So as the, the calendar, um, as dates go by, we will be saying whether, you know, the projects are completed and we, we will keep the board advised of where we are, what step we're at. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we'll talk about the next one. We had two transportation related items. We also don't have um, Mr. Lamb available because he's testifying, I think, at the uh, Board of Alders Finance meeting. Uh, but is there any information about the transportation contract uh, being posted or the clean bus rebate? If there's not, I request that we should probably, particularly for the transportation, con oh, yeah. Attorney Alexiatis, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, good evening, uh, friends. Uh, I don't have a lot of uh, specific information to share, only that I've been uh, uh, copied on a, a number of emails going back and forth between Mr. Lamb um, and the purchasing department in connection with uh, with preparing the uh, uh, the uh, the documents to be posted. So it's in process, um, but he can advise. Uh, he, he would be able to advise more specifically. So. There is work. I'm only here to say there is work being done on it. Well, I have no doubt, but we also were um, one of the things that we were trying to accomplish with the new transportation contract was to have things in place so that the alders know exactly where things are when before that they are going to be considering our budget because. Um, I think that we're going to want clarity on where things are with that contract, which is our our big one, uh, before they look favorably on any other budget requests. So, um, I guess my suggestion is an updated uh, timeline, uh, maybe at the full board meeting or in the packet or or something uh, to make sure or I um, clarified, Doctor Negron. Yes, well, we'll do similarly to the past. We'll make sure that we put a memo together so that at least you will know what is your projected date to have that um, posted for the public. Okay, thank you. I think there's another hand raised. I don't see any other hands raised. Or uh, Mr. Jamar Lean, did you want to comment? No, sir, that was a mistake. Oh. But thank you. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, sir. Um, I guess where, where, where it regards these two transportation items, you know, part of me is thinking maybe we need a special meeting. Um, not, not that I want a special meeting, but I know that there's a timeline involved and it's been several meetings um, and we haven't received an update. And so I'm... Uh, I'm concerned that we won't have, I'm concerned that it might be something we cannot do or we will have limited options because of the timeline. Um, but maybe that's not the case, but I would like some official communication in terms of what is happening and what decisions need to be made and uh, give the board members time to actually maybe have a discussion if that's needed versus an immediate decision. Okay, if I could just clarify, so for that, for the transportation contract posting, that does not require board action. So are you referring to the clean bus rebate update, which might require board action as part of the application process? So yes, for the clean bus rebate update, yes. Um, okay. And I, I don't know. I mean, I yes, I do, I think, recognize that board action is not required for the transportation contract update. Um, but I hope we are on target because I think there was a timeline put in place to give us some generous flexibility or at least enough time to not be rushed and to go through the process. And if that is not the case, um, it will be good for us to know so we can make adjustments as a okay. board. Okay. So I, I, I heard from the superintendent, I'm about to, 
uh, her hands raised, I'm, I'm about to throw it to her, but she was going to have a memo that would have that information about the updated timeline. And it sounded like it was going to be in our board packets. And we do have a board meeting on Monday where people could ask questions related to the posting of the transportation contract. Um, so that so that's would give us that information. I, as I recall from the timeline that was presented, it was, you know, there, there was plenty of time in it, but the concern would be, you know, if I remember correctly, it was a week or so ago, the con, it was going to be posted. And so we're just an adjusting of that. So, and then also information about the clean bus rate rebate. And I think that that has a hard deadline of February 1. Dr. Negron, did you want to? Yeah, so what I wanted to reiterate is that as it re uh, relates to the transportation contract and putting it all out, uh, we did draft a, a timeline. Um, the idea has always been to do this early enough. So there's plenty of opportunity for thorough discussion because upon my arrival, I, he I heard a lot about what transpired in the past. I certainly do not want um, to be in that space again. That is why I insisted to the team that I wanted a timeline that would have plenty of time for discussion. Uh, we have been working to get it up. The latest information I have is that it might go up as early as tomorrow. I didn't want to say that today because I hate saying something and then having to take it back. But Dr. Yarborough, just to kind of assure you that it's moving, uh, we're confident that it might be up tomorrow. There was a lot of things that were going back and forth, as you heard attorney um, Alexiada uh, reference, but I'm confident that it probably will be up tomorrow. As it relates to the clean bus rebate, um, there were additional questions that you posed, right? I I um, tasked my team to going back and making sure that they took another look to be able um, to give you thorough answers to your questions. There's a memo that the team has drafted. I just have to take a look at it. And that's the one that I'm hoping that will get into the packet so that you will have it so that then I feel confident that your answer, your questions have been answered and that we stay on track to be able to submit that application. Perfect. Many thanks on both topics. All right. Thank you. Anything else connected to this? That is all I have related to those two items. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the final thing on our agenda, just as uh, series 3000 policies, nothing uh, listed today, but there is on the draft potential uh, discussion calendars, you know, other policies moving forward, just so we can kind of keep that going. And I also have a to do item here is to double check on the uh, facil facilities use policy that we sent to governance since that came up today. Uh, so that's the end of the agenda. Is there anything else people up? Oh, Dr. Negron, your hands up? Or... Yes, uh, Mr. Wilcox, I know that at one point we we're also talking about uh, a presentation that we wanna bring forth uh, that I know FNO has been awaiting that presentation as it pertains to facilities and mm -hmm. the analysis that was done. So I am still optimistic that I wanna make sure that I have um, the team that did the analysis, the, the ones that were contracted prior to my arrival, um, to be able to present the findings. And at the same time, I wanna be able to present um, some recommendations as it relates to that. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to do that sometime in either, um, I'm pushing my team to be ready for January. And I know you put out the discussion items so I'm hoping to be able to do that in January, uh, latest February, because I think all of that has to play out into our budget process. As I think about, for example, um, operational effectiveness, and I see facilities as part of that. Yeah. 
Um, so I did list it just as on the draft as a potential for the first January meeting. Happy to talk about having it on the second January meeting or beyond that if if need be. But um, I just wanted to make sure that it was accounted for in your proposal. Yeah. So it, yeah, I did list it as the in the first January one, but also understanding that it could be ambitious because of the the winter break. Um, so I'm just, we're still aiming for it. So yeah. So I I think it's good to aim, and then uh, if we need to, we'll move it. It's important things to get it done right, but it's also important to get it done. So appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, hearing we've reached the end of the agenda, hearing nothing else on that item, a uh, motion to adjourn would be appreciated. So moved. I second that. So we'll vote. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for Thank a you. somewhat expedited meeting. Thank you. So, have a good one.